Yes, we can hear you, Eric. You can go ahead. All right. So my name is Eric Limpocker. At, uh, I'm the assistant group leader of the Energy Systems Group at MIT Lincoln Laboratory. We're a Department of Defense research lab um, that also does work for Homeland Security and Department of Energy. Um, we've been focusing on in, you know, ways to increase energy resilience for the country. And uh, we see microgrids as one of the, the key ways of doing that. We've been looking at ways to decrease the barriers to micro deployment, accelerate their deployment, and decrease their risk. And uh, we developed this uh, microgrid controller hardware loop demonstration platform as a way to, to go down that path and hopefully accelerate deployment of microgrids. Um, everything I'm about to say has been cleared for public release. So um, uh, I'm looking forward to, to sharing this with you and getting your feedback. So we break uh, power system test beds into these five categories. Um, anything that's a circle is, is simulation. Anything that's a square is hardware. So on one end, you could do a pure simulation and say MATLAB sim power systems. And on the opposite end of the spectrum, you could wait until the full system is built and, um, and uh, do testing on that. And there, there are clearly challenges with both. You know, with simulation, the, val the validity in, in, uh, of, your, of your models, the lack of having the actual device controller software is a challenge. Um, but obviously, on the full system, while, the, while their tests are you know, as realistic as they can be, you can't really test edge conditions without risking damage to your equipment. So there are a couple of steps in between. We see power test beds as an option, um, where you, say, get a small generator or a small inverter and, you know, use the actual device controller as a microcontroller. Um, but that's also fairly expensive. You can do power hardware in the loop, as was mentioned earlier, but that requires some fairly expensive equipment. You also risk damage to your uh, power equipment. And then, the, then there's controller hardware loop, where you basically put all the dangerous high voltage, high power equipment, uh, your distribution system, your inverters, your generators, your protection equipment, into simulation. And you trick the actual device controllers into thinking they're controlling their target devices. And that way, you can get uh, high fidelity, high realism um, at a, a lower cost and lower risk to your equipment than if you were to do one of these other options. So for that reason, we've been focusing on developing controller hardware loop. This kind of covers the, uh, the trade-offs in terms of cost, fidelity, and coverage. By fidelity, I mean the uh, accuracy of your, sim of your test um, and you know, driven l largely by whether or not you're running the actual control code that will be in the final system. And test coverage, what I mean is you know, can, can you test the edge conditions without risking damage to your equipment? So we see controller hardware loop as kind of a, a, in the sweet spot of uh, doing um, of doing power system testing, microgrid testing, and reducing risk. Um, we uh, you know, one feedback we've gotten from utilities is that this is fairly compelling because it allows you to do three things: it allows you to do your steady state analysis, allows you to do your dynamic and transient analysis, and it also allows you to take the controls behavior into account, which currently other you know, tools that are traditionally used in power system or distribution system analysis can't do. So for our simulation, we ran at a rate of 80 microseconds. You can sell, see, see that's well above the uh, Nyquist frequency for fault transients for the power controller response. You know, it's more than double that frequency. Um, it also allows you to take into account, you know, the, the higher level secondary and tertiary control as well. So uh, we see control hardware loop as, as fairly compelling because it allows uh, utility system engineers to do their steady state, dynamic, transient, and control behavior analysis all in one um, platform. So we, uh, we simulated this system. It's a 8 megawatt microgrid um, based on real data. We got real, real time data at the one second interval. Uh, we've got a 1, mega, uh, one MVA and 4 MVA gen set, um, as well as a 3.5 megawatt PV array and a 4 MVA battery. Um, and then each one of these relays, we also implemented realistic protection functions at various places, um, as well as developing realistic models of the, um, of the lines and transformers and loads. This is a system we ended up building up. Um, so we've got our firewall here. Um, we've got our Opal RT interface box, uh, monitoring and analog I.O. Um, the Opal RT target, and then our server and our power supply. And then this piece right here slides out, and we've got two 
actual wood, wood genset controllers, uh, Woodward Easy Gen 3000s, to do controller hardware loop. I'm going to show you uh, how those were connected in just a minute. So this is a block diagram of our setup. We've got the Opal RT unit, which is simulating our distribution system, uh, our one line, uh, simulating the relays, breakers, and, and uh, pulling out data, you know, phase angle, voltage, current uh, values um, that can be queried. We've got a simulated PV and inverter, simulated battery storage and power converter, simulated four MBA genset, simulated one MBA genset. And then two of those, we've got the two Woodward Easy gens controlling the simulated gensets. We basically tricked these into thinking they were controlling a real 13.8 kV genset. And then we've got the simulated um, controllers that we developed ourselves um, running inside the Opal RT unit, even though uh, in the future we're looking to get actual device controllers from real vendors to put them outside here. Um, we got some communication equipment. We've got a firewall, uh, a network switch that does some uh, IP translation. And then we've got our microcontrollers, basically the supervisory or tertiary controller. Um, which we were uh, testing. So I'm going to now uh, briefly go into, or rapidly go into, how we built up this system and um, then what we, what we did with it. So the first thing we did was we uh, uh, created a one-line diagram and a net list. We then wrote a script that would then port that net list into MATLAB Simulink model, which then gets ported into, um, well, we basically split into uh, three cores, and then uh, put it into the local RT unit. So that's the first step. Second step is we developed uh, power electronics models um, and machine models for the inverters, the battery power converter, and the genset. We put those into the Opal RT model. We then uh, got real-time load data um, over the course of our test window, which I think was so we had one test that was 15 minutes and another test that was two hours. Um, so we put those in as, as stimuli. We also put in um, two motors uh, so to test the inrush current that we didn't have a chance, we haven't had a chance to test that yet. Um, so that will be coming up soon. Then we developed some uh, device controllers. So we uh, developed a you know, software to mimic a um, SEL, SEL relay. Uh, we developed our own PV inverter controller, an average, um, based on the average PV inverter model. Uh, we developed our own genset controller and battery controller all in software. So we're looking to replace those in the future with, um, with actual hard, uh, controller in the loop, um, as shown here in this diagram. So we, we did get to the point of, of uh, integrating a Woodward Easy Gen 3000 to replace our simulated uh, genset controller. And we were able to swap back and forth running our, gen, our simulated genset off the Easy Gen versus running it off of the, um, uh, our, our own software controller as a way of validating our uh, control logic against the way that the EasyGen was running. We plan on doing that in the future for both the relays and um, you know, whatever um, uh, commercial inverter controller we end up getting. This shows a kind of more detailed diagram of how we tricked the Woodward EasyGens into thinking that they were controlling a real gen set. So we had a model of the motor generator as well as the uh, two circuit breakers. We created our own model of the governor and ABR. And then we, um, in the Opal RT unit, took out the tachometer and voltage current um, signals, which come out at 16 uh, volts AC. And then we worked with Opal to develop an interface box, which then translates those you know, with small transformers and, and uh, voltage to current um, converters into the signals that the Woodward EasyGen expects to see. So. Uh, we take 16 volt AC measurements, convert those into 120 volts AC, and then those get fed into the Woodward EasyGen, which then feeds out uh, or controls the simulated gen set with the uh, an AVR and governor signal. Um, so these are all the elements of our microcontroller hardware loop platform. Um, we also added some uh, radiance uh, variants to change the power output from the PV array as well as a grid outage in the middle of our simulation. And then we integrated um, this system with a Schneider microgrid controller as well as an Eaton microgrid controller and then ran both of those through a test sequence to evaluate their, their behavior. So um, we're looking to integrate our system with additional commercial microcontrollers. If there are any callers on the line who'd be interested in 
talking to us about that, please uh, get in contact with me. Um, and uh, you know, we, we've we've gotten some fairly good feedback from both Schneider and Eden, as well as uh, some of their competitors, about the potential value of this platform for uh, demonstrating uh, new project ideas and also doing risk reduction testing uh, for projects that have been approved. We also added some uh, real-time visualization and data collection and post-processing in order to be able to, in, in the future, uh, analyze results and be able to, in a, in a, you know, in a hard way, um, with hard metrics, compare performance between microcontrollers uh, on, our, on our test bed. So on October 1st, um, a little bit over a month ago, we, uh, we used this HIL platform as the centerpiece of the Massachusetts Microcontrol Symposium, where we ran uh, both the Schneider and Eaton microcontrollers through a 15-minute test sequence, both on-grid and off-grid. Um, we showed the controllers controlling power factor. We showed them going into islanding and shedding um, non-critical loads, controlling the gensets, PV, and battery, and uh, maintaining a voltage um, profile while doing so. So our ultimate vision um, for the microcontroller platform has four elements. So first is a demonstration platform, which we've done. We demonstrated the, you know, the capabilities of the Schneider Neaton controllers um, and allowed side-by-side -side comparison of their performance. Our next goal is to have this be a commissioning platform. So identify an actual microgrid that's being deployed. We're currently working on two um, uh, micro projects. One is in Boston as well as one that we're deploying here um, at Lincoln Laboratory. With ideas that before you put any steel in the ground, you can test out um, all, the, all the controls behavior. You can have your utility engineers you know, put various faults on the system and, and evaluate the behavior. You can do all the communications and controls integration. So basically get to the 80% or 90% completion um, on your you know, project integration and uh, system integration before any uh, hardware is actually deployed into the field. And third uh, vision is as a validation platform. So utilities you know, have, been, uh, have their own interconnection requirements. Uh, we see IEEE P23.8, which is the microgrid controller test standard on the horizon. Um, because of the high cost of building these sorts of test beds, we see controller hardware loop as a way to uh, validate the performance of uh, microcontrollers and device controllers against utility requirements and the 2038 standard without having to incur the large cost of building uh, power equipment. And then what undergirds, what will undergird all this is an open source project that we're looking to develop that basically develops an, a repository of device models, test feeders, test scripts, interfaces, uh, conversion scripts that uh, the microgrid industry will be able to access um, based on, the, on you know, joining a consortium as a way to help accelerate deployment. So this is kind of our vision for the eventual capabilities. Um, you know, have actual device controllers and interfaces developed for all the different ERs that are out there as well as you know, protection devices. Be able to uh, integrate <coughs> the, the you know, full set of microcontrollers that are out there in industry. Then also integrate with DMS and, and you know, third party service providers in order to test out the behavior and controls and integration of not just microgrids, but also other uh, distribution system projects, such as large-scale DER deployments, uh, self-healing distribution systems, and whatnot, um, as a way to decrease the utility's perceived risk, decrease the perceived risk from project developers and financiers, and also uh, allow engineers to do the integration and testing well in advance. Now, this captures what I see as elements of uh, eventual open source uh, repository, uh, test feeders. The, 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 sorry, let me go back up. So the, the foundation is the, the hardware loop platform. So you've got conversion scripts in order to get it to OPLRT. You've got validated device models, like for the gensets and, and uh, power converters, ideally validated by the vendors themselves. And then validated device controller software uh, for the cases where you can't get the uh, controllers on your bench top. Then you know, the next step is to build up the control in the loop repository, so getting the interface circuitry 
that I showed earlier, um, actual physical circuitry in order to trick the device controllers into thinking they're controlling their actual targets, developing that interface code, and then also the communication interface uh, translation code. Once you have that, then you can develop um, tests based on that platform, test feeders, test stimuli, and post-processing post -processing scripts for evaluating test results. And I see all of this eventually going into this open source repository um, for which we've gotten a fair amount of interest from industry and utilities um, and project developers. So um, I know that was a whirlwind tour of our project. I want to acknowledge our sponsors, Sarah Mahmoud and Jalama Parr at DHS s and Dan Tan at Department of Energy, Office of Electricity. There were a number of divisions at, at the lab that worked on this effort. We had a number of excellent collaborators in industry and in the, the government sector for making this happen. And here's my contact information for anyone who would like to reach out to me. So thank you very much, Eric, for your um, collaboration. And uh, please stay online for the um, until the end, where we'll have our um, questions uh, session. So just before concluding this uh, webinar, we have our second poll on which we'd have to have your input on the following question: What do you consider the most challenging aspect of microgrid real-time simulation? Now you can select only one in this case. So simulation of large AC systems with very short lines accuracy of fast power electronics, integration of communication protocols, hardware in the loop as part of a more global testing environment, or other? <laughs>